Hello students, my name is Neyati Seyit and thanks for watching Edipedia Word videos. My topic for the presentation is the ninth section of circulatory system that is sphygmomanometer. Okay, so it is a instrument for measuring blood pressure. It typically consists of inflatable rubber cuff. This is your inflatable rubber cuff. Uh, which is applied to the arm and connected to a column of the mercury. This is your mercury uh, next to the graduated scale. Okay, next to the graduated scale. This is your graduated scale, enabling the determination of systolic and diastolic blood pressures by increasing and gradually releasing the pressure in the cuff. Okay, so this is the uh, inflatable rubber cuff okay this is your inflatable rubber cuff and this is to inflate the curve by squeezing the bulb and uh, this is a graduated scale okay and uh, it, it this bulb can also used to be deflate the curve by turning the release valve okay and here you can place the stethoscope uh, bell here to note it and uh, this is how it works and what's the correct posture of uh, measuring blood pressure always sit upright with your back straight always sit upright with your back straight okay and uh, the gap between the chair and the top of the table should be between 25 to 30 centimeters so this distance should be uh, between 25 centimeter to 30 centimeter place your arm on the table like this okay like this place your arm on the table like this so that the curve will be at the same level as that of your heart see this is your heart and this is your arm so uh, more or less it is in the same level as your heart okay and just remove uh, tight fitting clothing from your upper arm and any thick uh, clothing such as sweater and do not place the cuff over thick clothes and, and this is mandatory and this should be kept in mind okay and uh, do not roll your slips if it is too tight okay because that will not give you the correct blood pressure reading okay now we very well know that a blood pressure is generally measured by determining the millimeters of mercury that is mmhd which is displaced in a pressure gauge called as a sphygmomanometer okay and it is expressed as a ratio of the systolic pressure over diastolic pressure okay for a healthy resting adult person the average systolic and diastolic pressures are 120 and 80 mm hd in arteries near the heart pressure drops with increasing distance from the heart please note that i'm um, again repeating pressure drops with increasing distance from the heart and the branchial artery in the arm uh, light above the below is used for measuring blood pressure please always note that a branchial artery which is uh, in the arm a little above the elbow is used for measuring the blood pressure okay now uh, blood pressure measurements the lateral pressure that the blood exerts against the wall of the blood vessel is called as blood pressure we very well know that now it is caused by what it is caused by three things First is the contraction of the ventricle. When ventricles they uh, come in the systole position or when they come in the contraction position. And second is when uh, resistance to the passage of blood through arterioles and capillaries takes place. Okay. So the pressure that exerts in the artery is called as arterial blood pressure and the pressure which is high uh, that is high during systole and it is called as systolic blood pressure okay and it is very low during diastole always note that in systolic it is always a high blood pressure and in the diastole it is always the low blood pressure okay in uh, average adult uh, 
uh, in a resting position systole blood pressure is 120 mmhg and in diastolic condition the average uh, adult uh, in the resting position has uh, diastolic pressure of 80 mmhg okay so it is low during diastole whereas it is high in the systole okay and the difference between these two pressure is called as pulse pressure that means difference between uh, systole and diastole they are, it is known as what it is known as pulse pressure okay the blood pressure is high in the aorta aorta is the largest artery which is situated near the heart it gradually decreases as it goes away from the heart and it is low in the capillaries okay but it is minimum in the veins okay it is minimum in the veins and now for clinical purpose the blood pressure is measured from the large arteries of the arm which we call it as branchial artery and the instrument which is used for measuring the blood pressure is known as a sphygmomanometer okay the systolic blood pressure is an ideal in an ideal man is 120 mmhg i am again repeating and the diastolic blood pressure is around 80 mmhg and the blood pressure is measured in millimeters of mercury okay that is mmhg okay Now comes what is sphygmomanometer. So sphygmomanometer is a medical instrument which is used to measure arterial blood pressure. It consists of pump, dial curve and valve. Okay. And to measure blood pressure, the curve is wrapped around the patient's arm and then inflated using the pump. Okay, and the pressure which is applied by the curve it closes off the branchial artery so that no blood flows through it. Okay, this is the uh, this is how it works. Uh, so sphygmo manometer it consists of an inflatable cuff. This is your cuff, okay, which is applied on the arm, and uh, it and it is connected with the pressure gauge. Okay, and it is connected with the pressure gauge and uh, the instrument is placed at the level of heart i told you in the correct posture position that uh, your arm should be placed on the desk of the doctor uh, it should be uh, more or less in the same level with the heart okay so the curve is wrapped around the upper arm it is rapidly inflated with hand pump until no pulse is felt in the wrist okay this shows that the blood pressure to the forearm is stopped. This is your forearm and it, 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 blood pressure or the blood supply to the forearm is stopped. Always the stethoscope is placed near here. It is placed on the branchial artery just below the cuff. Just below the cuff. This is your inflatable cuff and the stethoscope bell is placed here. Okay, just uh, below the cuff. The cuff is slowly deflated. Okay, cuff go deflate karna hai. the sound of blood flow is heard through a stethoscope which is placed here on uh, branchial artery okay when sound is heard pressure on the gauze is noted it is uh, noted here okay and this sound is of blood rushing through the arteries at pre-pressure due to ventricular contraction or ventricular systole okay and the reading on the gauze is the systolic blood pressure okay and the sound that gradually decreases and stops at last and the reading on the gauze now indicates that diastolic blood pressure okay this is how a sphygmo manometer it records systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure okay now there are various factors that influence blood pressure first is your total blood volume more is the total blood volume more will be the bp okay so the arteries being elastic can allow more quantity of blood to be passed through them and more the blood more is the pressure okay have you seen uh, patients uh, with hemorrhage condition uh, 
During hemorrhage condition, the volume decreases and hence pressure decreases. Okay. Now, what's the second factor that influences blood pressure? Is the viscosity of blood. More is the viscosity, more will be the BP. That means more the concentration of blood, greater will be the pressure. And person which is uh, who is suffering from anemia have less RBCs and hence low blood pressure. Okay. Now, what's the third factor that influences blood pressure? It is elasticity of arteries. Okay. Elasticity of arteries is indirectly proportional to blood pressure. That means more will be the elasticity of the arteries, less will be the PP. And less uh, is the elasticity of arteries, more will be the BP. Okay. As you can see, uh, in uh, when when arteries they become hardened, that condition is known as arteriosclerosis. Okay, uh, in this the arterial wall it loses its elasticity due to deposition of cholesterol on its wall, and the hardening of arteries due to cholesterol is called as atherosclerosis, and this results in increased arterial blood pressure. Okay. Now, the fourth factor that influences blood pressure is the venous return. Venous return, it is the rate at which blood is brought back to the heart through veins. Blood pressure, it increases in direct proportion to the venous return. That means more will be the venous return, more will be the BP. Okay. Various factors such as muscular contraction, breathing movements affect the venous return and indirectly the arterial blood pressure. Okay. Now, fifth uh, uh, factor that influences blood pressure is the cardiac output. It is the amount of a blood which is forced out from the heart at each contraction of ventricle or per minute. So, the uh, increase in the cardiac output will increase the systolic pressure. Okay. Now comes uh, 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 another factor that influences the blood pressure is the age. More will be the age, more will be the BP. BP always increases with the age because the elasticity of the arteries, it decreases due to deposition of salts. Salts is one of the contributing factor in hypertension. Hypertension means more BP because any plus ions, they hold water and cause hardening of blood vessels. But the heart rate, it decreases with rate. Okay. And... Uh, Sex is also a uh, factor that influences the blood pressure. The mean blood pressure is around uh, 120 to 80 mmHg in males. And in females, it is around 115 to 75 mmHg. In females, BP is slightly less than males up to the age of 45 years. But after the menopause, when menstrual cycle ceases, the BP in female become equal to males okay and another most important factor that influences blood pressure is peripheral resistance it refers to the difficulty with which blood flows from the large arteries to the arterioles the resistance will be greater when the walls of the arterioles are constricted and least when walls of the arterioles are dilated so uh, chronic vasoconstriction vasoconstriction means vessels when they constrict okay so chronic vasoconstriction of arterioles lead to higher resistance and hence increased arterial blood pressure okay that is known as hypertension whereas vasodilation that means when uh, vessels they dilate it leads to less resistance and hence decreased arterial blood pressure which we call it as hypotension okay now comes uh, pressure uh, as I have told you uh, how this sphagnum manometer works 
this is how uh, it goes that uh, number it is recorded when a sound is heard for the first time as the pressure in the cuff is slowly relaxed and the second number is the diastolic pressure which is the blood pressure in between contractions when the heart is relaxed okay and this number is recorded when the thumping of blood is squeezing through the narrowed branchial artery is no longer hot okay so this comes to an end keep watching atopedia word videos thank you